Welcome to chapter four. This is the integumentary system. And what we're going to learn in this chapter is about the structures and functions of the skin. You'll learn the terms related to the layers and the accessory structures of the skin. As always, combining forms, prefixes, suffixes. We'll learn some medical terminology related to the integumentary system including some ad adjectives and related terms, signs and symptoms and medical conditions, tests and procedures, surgical interventions and therapeutic procedures, medications and drug therapies, and about the medical specialties and the specialists and, um, surrounding the integumentary system. Abbreviations are always important, uh, important to complete all the chapter exercises, uh, read, uh, Look at some of the case studies and the medical records so you can practice reading a medical record for those of you to, that don't currently do that and um, complete all the prep you and uh, module assignments within Canvas. So let's talk a little bit about the integumentary system. Um, that really refers to the, st the skin or it's sometimes called the cutaneous membrane or the integument, and that is the meaning protective covering. Cutaneous means relating to the skin, and um, this consists of two layers, an outer epidermis and an inner dermis, and the skin is the body's first line of defense against environmental hazards, such as bacteria and viruses. The integumentary system also includes the skin and its accessory structures, and in this chapter, it covers the anatomy and physiology of the skin, word parts, and all of the things that we just discussed. So when we look at the uh, integumentary um, system from an anatomy and physiology perspective, the skin is considered an organ because two or more tissues combine to perform specialized functions. This includes the epithelial tissue and connective tissue are the two main types of tissues that make up the skin. Looking at the structures, the skin is the largest organ in the body. It's, like we said, composed of two layers, the outer epidermis and the layer beneath the epidermis called the dermis. And the accessory structures of the integumentary system include the hair, nails, sediferous glands, or your sweat glands, and your sebaceous glands, the oil glands. The functions of the skin are um, protection mainly, so uh, that includes things like protecting the body from harmful microorganisms, uh, from underlying structures, um, from the harmful effects of UV radiation, protects the body from dehydration, and it produces vitamin D, and it regulates body temperatures, and it houses the sensory nerve endings. When we look at terms, um, once again, I'll just pronounce them so you can practice, and I really recommend using the vocabulary helper um, uh, with the companion site. Uh, epidermis, dermis, and the subcutaneous la uh, layer. So these um, are always potential test questions there. Terms related to the integumentary system also include the adipocytes, the erector pili muscles, and that's where goosebumps are made when the erector pili muscles contract and an action that causes the hair to stand up straight. Hair, the hair follicles, keratin, keratinocytes, melanocytes, nail, sebaceous glands, sebum, and the sediferous sedif uh, glands. Here's a diagram of the layers of the skin and their accessory structures. And the epidermis, remember that the prefix epi means upon or on. Therefore, the epidermis is the layer of the skin on top of the dermis. When we look at word parts, the, um, this table lists words parts related to the integumentary system. 
So combining form, adipo, cryo, cyano, dermo, electro, erythro, hydro, carado, lipo, milano, miso, necro, onchio, pacchio, pio, ritido, sclero, sebo, trico, xantho, zero. This table is the prefixes a or an, bio, epi, intra, para, pair, sub, and trans. And then this table includes the suffixes side, derma, ecto, genic, itis, logist, logi, malacia, pathy, phagia, phagia, um, plasia, plasty, rhea, and tone. Then we move on to adjectives and other related terms. Here where we put them together, the, the prefix and suffixes. So adipose, atypical, circumscribed, cyanosis, diaphoresis, dysplasia, arithmetose, eschar, exfoliation, hyperplasia, indurated, integumentary, pallor, pruritic, purulent, sebaceous, pseudoriferous, and turgor. These are some medical conditions, and I'm going to name them, and then we'll see some great um, pictures of them, and I'll talk a little bit more about them. These medical conditions are abrasion, abscess, acne, albinism, burn, superficial burn, partial burns, and full thickness burns. So there's several types of burns, carbuncle, cellulitis, cicatrix, and comedo. This is a picture of albinism, which is a group of inherited disorders with deficiency in the pigment, in the skin, hair, and eyes. Here's the degrees of burns showing superficial burns, which is a burn only involving the epidermis. It causes redness and swelling, but no blisters. So most of the time, this is what we see in a sunburn, or commonly this is called a first degree burn. The partial thickness burn, this is a burn involving the epidermis and the dermis, and it usually involves blisters, and this is commonly called a second degree burn. And then a full thickness burn, this is a burn involving destruction of the entire skin and it extends into the subcutaneous fat, muscle, or the bone, and often, often causes severe scarring, and this is commonly called a third degree burn. Here is a picture of a toe and a foot with cellulitis, and this is the inflammation of the subcutaneous connective tissue. Additional medical conditions include a contusion, a cyst, a decubitus ulcer, and a dermatome. And here, this picture of a cyst on her cheek is a closed sack that contains liquid or a semi-solid material. Additional medical conditions include eczema, excoriation, a fissure, a furuncle, gangrene, herpes simplex, herpes zoster, empantigo, jaundice, a keloid, lesion, macula, nevus, nodule, papule, and parenchyma, parenchyma, parenchyma. Um, and here we can see eczema, um, that is the inflammation or condition causing patchy redness, scales, blisters, itchiness, and burning. We see a fissure on the side of this person's mouth, and that's a deep furrow, a cleft or a slit or a tear in the skin. 
We also see herpes zoster, and that's the infection caused by the herpes virus, um, the varicella zoster virus, and it's characterized by an eruption of blisters that follows the course of uh, the affected peripheral nerves um, or dermatomes, and that's commonly called shingles. So that's a picture of the herpes zoster, which um, or otherwise shingles. And pentigo, that's a contagious bacterial infection, typically occurring on the face in children. Uh, a nodule here uh, is the solid raised area located on any layer of the skin. Here it's on, a, on, a, on the eyelid. And a keloid is um, an overgrowth of scar tissue, and this is um, on the earlobe um, surrounding a pierced ear. Papules here, this picture shows the small raised solid circumscribed area of the uh, skin. We can see and we identify those as papules. Um, Paronchia is the inflammation or an infection around the nail due to bacteria or fungi. And psoriasis, um, we see that here as well and that is the skin condition marked by red itchy scaly patches primarily on the scalp, the knees, the elbows, or the trunk. Some additional medical terms include pediculosis, psoriasis, which we just saw, a pustule, rosacea, scabies, and tinea. And here we can see a pustule, that's the small circumscribed elevation of the skin containing pus, sometimes associated with acne. And on, on the right, we see scaby mites and an infestation. And scabies are, it's a skin disease with an eruption and itching caused by the mites, the bites of the mites. Additional medical conditions include tinea capitis, tinea pedis, urticaria, varicella, verruca, vesicle, vitiligio, a wheel, and xanthoderma. And xanthoderma, you can see here by the narrative, it's lots of conditions, um, including hepatitis, foods high in beta carotene, um, can cause a yellowing of the skin. So hepatitis, we see a yellow type of skin or you know, people that juice a lot of carrots, um, get a high amount of carotene, and we can or eat a lot of carrots, we can see causes the yellowing of the skin. Um, sweet potatoes, they also, um, any high uh, orangey uh, types of foods that contain a lot of beta carotene. Here we see a tinea of the arm, so that's a fungal infection in the hair, skin, and nails, commonly called ringworm. Um, we see some wheels, and those are the reddish lesions that often change size and shape and extend it in uh, adjacent areas, and that's usually associated with allergens. And then we see some vesicles here. Um, that's the clear fluid-filled raised lesions, commonly called a blister and uh, vitiligo uh, we see here and that's the area of the skins that um, don't have melan melanocytes and they appear as white patches on otherwise normal looking skin so tests and procedures we're going to go through those and uh, a biopsy or um, the abbreviation is BX, culture and sensitivity, uppercase C and uh, uppercase S, a frozen section, <clears throat> a scratch test, and a tuberculosis skin test. And most of you are probably uh, familiar with that, the MAN2 test or the PPD, which is the purified protein derivative test. And um, old, older versions of the uh, skin test used to be called the time test. Um, 
um, but now um, we studies and science have proven that the PPT test is a single puncture injection is more accurate than the um, time test that used to be used. We'll pause here to the next section.